For all your NRG innovation product needs, make sure you check out driveenergy.com. That's D R I V E N R G dot com. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Evil Rabbit here on Forza Horizon 4. It is a wintry, snowy mess going on right now here in the season change. But today I'm going to tackle a couple comments that I've been getting a lot recently about wheel settings here on Horizon 4, as well as we will be switching over to Forza 7 to do a little testing on there as well. And that is about the stock G920 rim. So today, for today's purposes, get the wheel cam on. We do have the stock G920 wheel on here. So the smaller diameter wheel. We have taken off my Energy Innovations wheel, which you can see is a lot bigger. We've taken off the Energy Innovations wheel for today. We're going to tackle drifting in this in our 350Z, which is tune is up on the marketplace. And we are going to tackle drifting and see if settings need to be modified a little bit because a lot of people are saying they can't throw the wheel as well as I was, but I do have a bigger rim, so the weight helps. So we are going to uh, tackle this today. I do still have my buttons relocated on the side. So the only thing missing from here is the paddles and the actual buttons, but it is on here. So we are going to go down the street to our little uh, testing place. I would say down the street, but it's actually uh, not really down the street. It is kind of down the street, but like I said, it is a wintry mess out today here in Forza Horizon 4. So we are gonna see what the wheel feels like on a stock G920 and see if maybe settings need to be changed for drifting here in Horizon 4. I said Horizon 3 because everybody's saying that they cannot chuck the wheel as well as I was. So they wanted to see about a stock rim. So we are here today on the stock wheel on our G920 base. And we're going to see how it feels uh, for so it does feel a little bit lighter and the uh, the ability to throw it is not really there I can see so we may have to make some modifications to our settings for a stock wheel for the smaller rim size but uh, that's what we're here today to find out snow does definitely not help but you know it's okay because uh, that just means it's you know, even more slipperier. So I can see that the weight of the rim is a little bit different. Um, so we may have to change the feedback settings a little bit. But, like I said, we're going to give this a shot. We're going to basically do the same thing we were doing in the other video. But with the stock rim, hopefully uh, the parking lot is not completely snow covered, which I feel like it is. It is completely snow covered, but it is okay. We will still try and get you have arrived at your destination. get this in here. So, as I can see, the rim does not want to throw as well on a stock, but you can still throw it. But I can see where it right there it stops. So now I can see what people are asking about being on a stock rim. You know it being a little bit harder to throw the wheel but it's still throwable but on the brakes so the rim is still throwable and it the settings are still driftable uh is it a little bit of work yeah it's a little bit of work so we're going to uh check our settings I gotta switch my wires real quick. And I think what we will end up doing is probably lowering our force feedback rate to help with that. We're gonna go down. So everything is still set up. Wheel dampening scale we may have to lower because that may also... Uh... So let's first try off. We're gonna first lower the wheel dampening scale because that will make it not as heavy. We'll lower that to 40 from 60. 
And uh, we're gonna try doing this without a handbrake. Just with uh, just with some clutch kicking and weight transfer. So lowering the wheel dampening scale to from 60 to 40 makes the wheel easier to throw, as you can see. So that wheel dampening scale is how stiff the wheel feels. So I could still throw the wheel without having the lower force feedback settings and it does feel pretty good so lowering that helped a lot as you can see I can still kind of throw the wheel try and do this like with one hand so that it's not like I'm forcing the wheel try to do one-handed drifting here some one-handed transitions I'm trying to do it without handbrake, and I'm just trying to do it with all clutch kicks in one hand, so... Alright, so here we go. So it is possible. Um, it's definitely... So the, four, the lowering the uh, wheel dampening scale does help a lot. So let's go in and change the force feedback setting and see if that helps a little bit as well. Uh, we'll put the wheel dampening back up, I think, to... Uh, to the uh, 60 game actually kind of feels uh kind of feels good on the stock size wheel I'm that's just my opinion I know a lot of people are saying oh it sucks they don't like it but let's lower the uh, force feedback scale down to we'll get on a 30 and let's see how much of a difference that makes on the wheel feel so that makes the wheel very spin very freely but I feel like it doesn't have as much um, it doesn't have as much feel, but it still feels pretty good. Being as it is a uh, smaller rim, force feedback, a lot of it would definitely make a difference. So lowering that allows me to throw the wheel. We go back to doing a little bit of one-handed, so you can see the wheel a little bit better. Ah! One-handed drifting, definitely not easy, <laughs> especially because I am right-hand dominant. I'm trying to do this with my left hand because of the side that the camera's on for you guys to see. But it just goes, to, you can, on the stock wheel, get very sideways, and this feels actually really good. So the force feedback going down feels good. The wheel uh, dampening scale leaving force feedback up feels good as well. As you can see, we are just able to just map this brakes and just left foot brake, full throttle, half braking pressure. Kick it back the other way, doing this all one-handed. So we do so I can see everybody's frustration with the smaller rim. It does make a big difference. But those two setting changes, mess with those, lower the force feedback down to about 30, and or lower the wheel dampening force down to what I had it lowered down to. So those are two options on what you can do to make the wheel on a stock wheel feel better. But all my other settings that I have are the same. So for the uh, sake of this right now, the settings that we have in here, all is the same. Vibration scale is at zero. We have 30 force feedback, 100 centering spring, 60, 0, 0, and I'm on 870 so I don't hit a hard stop. Um, Try those settings out. Let me know what you guys think because I know a lot of people were saying it's really hard for them to drift on the stock wheel. It doesn't feel right. They can't throw the wheel like I was able to. So I did have to modify my driving style a little bit, if you noticed, from the smaller wheel to the bigger wheel. So my bigger wheel, I was just chuck with one hand. This one, if you noticed, I'm kind of keeping my hand on the wheel and forcing it. Well, not forcing it. I'm, I'm just like kind of spinning my, I was gonna go for handbrake but my handbrake's not hooked up yet so I'm kind of using my hands on it to spin it like that oh uh, I just wrecked somebody's Mazda so you do you can't just like chuck the wheel like I was doing on my you know NRG wheel and I think that has to do with the uh, the size and the weight because you can't really chuck it like the G920 wheel with the uh, NRG wheel on so the G920 wheel you kind of have to uh, you can still throw it like that, 
but you kind of have to keep your hands on it in a sense. So you can't just like chuck it without having a hand on it. See, I had to chuck it a little bit, but then I was able to pull it back the way I wanted it to. So the stock wheel is definitely, definitely possible. And it, it does feel pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. This, this 370 or 350 Rocket Bunny feels pretty good on a stock wheel with those settings. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this. So we're gonna hook my handbrake. Well, we're gonna set my settings back to uh, how I had them. Because uh, we are gonna go ultimately back to my normal rim. So we're going to go back and change. I think we are going to probably just lower this a little bit from uh, 50 and maybe drop this down just a smidge. So Horizon 4 stock G920 wheel. Don't get frustrated with it. It is entirely possible and you can do it quite easily if you modify the settings a little bit and just get used to, you know, kind of keeping your hand on the wheel and you know throwing it like that so I wanted to bring this video out because I wanted to address this because a lot of people have been talking about it with my settings video so that's what that is so now we're gonna switch over to Forza Motorsport 7 and do the same thing on the small rim on Forza 7 about drifting with a small rim and say we'll probably throw the FD cars around so I'm going to switch over games. I'll see you guys when I switch over to Forza 7. And uh, we'll address Forza 7 here today as well as Forza Horizon 4. Okay, so we are actually just here on Forza Motorsport 7. And it looks like there's a Pro Formula Drift Bounty Hunter at Maple Valley. So we got our handbrake set up. And... Uh, I feel like we're just going to go straight into this bounty race and, uh, you know, hop into this game and uh, see what we got. Wait, wait. I would say, where where are my FD cars? Come on. Where are my FD cars? There's my FD cars. So we're going to rock the Al Conadale car because I do like Al Conadale's S14. So we're going to rock Al Conadale's car. So we are on... Our G920. So, with the G920 wheel, so let's go for the uh, sake of settings. This is what we're running for settings. We're running centering spring at 100, wheel dampening scale at zero, force feedback. Minimum feedback is at 95. So, in Forza 7, the settings are a little bit different than Horizon 4 because of the way this game feels. So, we're going to try these settings first. We have Force feedback understeer, steering linearity at 55 in this game, 870 as well. A force feedback scale is all the way up at 100. Vibration scale is at a zero. So we're going to run this with the stock G920 wheel and um, see how it feels and see if we have to modify any settings. Um, we do have our handbrake hooked back up because we uh, will definitely need it for this event. And we are running the sequential shifter as well, but it works just as well if you have non-sequential that just is a preference that i'm running right now so we're gonna go start it and uh get comfy in the seat on this uh stock rim here we are bounty hunter event ella Conde ls14 maple valley reversed hydraulic cam brake stock g920 rim let's do it so like i said we are on those basic settings we'll probably have to get a first lap in here before we can uh really get our points totals in because we're at a disadvantage starting off at a dead stop but as you can see those settings that I have on a stock rim feel pretty good actually so just got to get used to it a little bit and then we will be matting this course trying to get as many points as we can in this bounty hunter event Ooh, that car came out from underneath me right there though So this Alaconadale S14 is uh, definitely a monster. Now, the wheel is kind of twitchy with the force feedback so high. So we may have to lower the feedback a little bit for the stock rim, but we are going to definitely uh, 
give this uh give this a shot. We have to start getting sideways here. Oh, yeah. So the feedback is a little rough. So we're gonna go to our options, and we're going to go to our controller, and and we're going to adjust the force feedback a little bit. And uh, probably force feedback force. Force feedback scale, there we go. We're probably gonna drop this down to about 80 and uh, see how that feels because the smaller rim is kind of ripping it out of my hand. Okay, that feels better. So on the smaller rim, you probably wanna run about an 80 force feedback instead of 100 because it does feel better on 80 because the small rim is almost wanting to rip it out of your hand. So we gotta try and get a good uh, a good lap here now that we got a little bit acclimated to the car. And uh, adjusted the wheel settings a little bit. There we go. Ooh, it's all massive, pour on some massive angle right there. Cause we gotta beat this rival event. Well, at least beat somebody in this rival event. Are we gonna be a top tier in points? Probably not. We're gonna start getting ourselves sideways here. We break ourselves in, down to the third. Trying to stay on track. There we go, so we don't lose these points. So we'll only break turn there. We can keep points, we're on some more angle. There we go. I'm gonna get some guy who was rocking Justin Pollock's car, so trying to keep. So I should have shifted into fourth tuner because we could have linked all of that together. But I was not able to, so. So there we go. Run this sweeper as many points as we can. We're gonna beat 30, 38, and I think as long as we keep our points, we should be able to. Come on, do the straight. Oh, we clipped the grass. So my best lap was 33. So we actually did not uh did not beat that uh rival event, probably because we uh weren't able to link that turn. So we're gonna try and get uh I'm gonna do one more lap here. One more full lap anyways. So what I wanna be able to do is come out of this turn. Shift into fourth. Get sideways, stay sideways. Just touch the grass, handbrake that. Keep the points going and pretty much link as much of the track as we can. This car is definitely uh not I wouldn't say it's a handful, but it's uh it's definitely a lot different than a just tuned drift car. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna try and start getting points right away at the line. So we're gonna start monging our way. Break in. Whoa. I thought we were gonna lose our points, but we didn't. Kept our points going. Transition back this way, really force of angle. Throw it back this way in third. Just a little left foot braking to keep on track so we don't go way off track. Shift into fourth. Get sideways here, stay sideways here. Try and stay sideways the entire track. Handbrake, a little bit of brake so we don't go off track because I felt like we were gonna go off track there. Pour on more angle, left foot brake, stay off the grass. There we go. Run the pit lane, left foot brake out so we don't run into the pit wall. That's better. That's a lot better. Is it gonna be enough to beat that man's score though? Nope, 34. So we're just gonna keep this run going and we gotta try and at least beat him once. Stay in fourth, maybe? Let's 
Trying to stay in fourth gear maybe, a little hard left foot brake. Using the weight to transition, no handbrake needed there. Back on throttle. Stay on track, don't lose those points. Oh, I got scared, I thought we were gonna lose all those points. Cut the grass line, a little handbrake. There we go. This is what I wanted to do. This is pretty much linking this whole track. On the pit line like it before, a little left foot brake to get out of the wall. There we go. A little bit more on the left foot braking. I don't think that's going to be enough either. This man is definitely uh, got his points down. So, G920 on a stock rim. Forza 7, settings. Lower him down to about 80 for force feedback scale, and you should be okay. Forza Horizon 4, also okay. Just lower your uh, force feedback scale and centering scale a little bit, and you should be okay. I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you guys out. For everybody that's been commenting about the stock rim types, um, I think I'm going to throw my, uh, my big wheel back on because it does help. Uh, because it does help. <laughs> Oh boy. So, as always, you guys know you can follow me on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, all of which are found in the description box below. If you guys have any other questions or anything, feel free to private message me on Instagram. Comment down on the videos because I do appreciate all the support. Like I said, I hope this helps some of you guys out who are running the stock wheels and haven't modified yours to a bigger rim yet or don't want to modify yours. So, until next time, I'm Evil Rabbit, and I will see you guys on the next one.